Hello everybody, welcome to Eternal Brews. My name is Pojo and we are looking at a twist deck today and I'm so very excited to be looking at a twist deck today because twist is a really delightful mechanic and I'm very excited to see some cool twist decks that are actually viable in ranked. This is the first of the lists that we are putting out for the new Trials of Grodoff expansion and it is a relic twist deck using Lorai the Appraiser. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on with it and what kind of things that we are adding in specifically from the expansion, first things first, as well as what the overall goal of the deck. So this deck is all about twisting units to get particular benefits. Uh, we are repeating twists with Frontier Surveyor, and we are also using Distilled Venom to twist units and kill things with that curse and make just a sec effectively very cheap, simple removal happen while also adding a ton of card advantage. I talked a little bit about Distilled Venom in our card breakdown, but essentially this card just translates into a lot of card advantage against very, very large units. And against small units, it functions as a pretty simple uh, removal card that will often leave you up a card, which is really, really handy against Oni Ronins, anything with one health, uh, anything with two health even. If you just want to like kill a couple of things with a good, simple, fast twist, Distilled Venom is there to do it, and we've got a couple of cards that can actually activate and cause that to happen. So uh, this deck uses Lorai the Appraiser. Lorai the Appraiser pays two to twist and draw a relic from your deck with cost equal to her health. So starts at 0, 6, then becomes a 0, 5, grabbing you a 5 drop, then a 4, get, grabbing you a 4 drop, then a 3, then a 2, then a 1. Uh, we have relics all the way down to 2, but we're not keeping anything in the 1 or 0 slot for the most part. Uh, Infinite Hourglass has been in this deck before, but for the most part you're not going to twist Lorai that many times. You're going to just get some amount of card advantage out of her, and also pick up particular cards that you very much need for this deck. So, Lorai's overall kit requires that we have a wide variety of interesting different relics, and that we have like one to two copies of each so that we can easily grab them by twisting Lorai, and therefore get some value out of them. So let's talk about what all is in our relic setup. First off, we have Stormhalt Knife. This is the card that we can grab by playing Distilled Venom on other units, and also by using Xenon Obelisk to buff up Lorai to above six. Lorai will pick this up pretty frequently. The card is free when you have 10 health or less, which means that it can be used to just simply blow up something when you're getting aggressed upon. It's a very good way to save yourself if you're dealing a lot of problems with uh, Skycrag aggro, which I found very common when we were first testing the deck. It's also just a really reasonable card to pick up if you just need a card to pick up with Lorai to trade into the market. There's other six drop relics, but like Vara's Sanctum didn't really go very well in here, and that's about all the ones that we wanted to play. So this one makes the cut by sheer necessity, as well as by being just a very, very powerful and effective tactic for staving off aggro decks. Staff of Stories at five allows you to draw cards each turn. It also gives you a decent amount of extra health. And with the amount of twist units that we have in this deck, we happen to have a lot of high health, very durable units, which are very, very hard to kill in general. So this is a better deck than most to play Staff of Stories with, and even if we want to uh, Crystal and Chalice, which is not in this current build, but sometimes makes it in as a replacement for Xenon Obelisk. So card draw is pretty decent here. We can usually defend Staff of Stories. It's not actually too hard to deal with, and it's also just a good, the, I think, the only available 5 drop in Relics to grab. Xenon Obelisk, this is the star to get to. If we can put this down, we can make all of our twist units much, much stronger. We have two in the main and one in the market, and we can grab them all through different means as well as just play them down to make all of our twist units quite a bit better and capable of twisting more and more often. Most of our twist units twist for a lot of value, so that's something that we want to pay a lot of close attention to. Snowfort gives us an extra health, which is super awesome if we're just trying to get twist units out. Simple, very easy three drop unit, and then two for two we have Power Stone, which is the card that allows us to ramp up and get extra twists out of other things. We're happy to have run four of this in the deck. It's our primary source of ramp. It's very reliable, and once we play it, we are very frequently going to get to better twists as a result of playing Power Stone. So good stuff there. So that's our Relic setup. The rest of it is all about basically making the twist units happen. We defend ourselves with Permafrost, Distilled Venom, and Hailstorm, and have a little Aurelian Cargo in here to pick up a little extra power, although some of that is coming from Street Urchin and Bulbous Humbug. On Twist Units, we run Street Urchin, which is a card for every twist that we get. With Distilled Venom, this card can steal just an insane amount of card advantage. It also punishes spells, which is really, really relevant if you want to sort of mess up your opponent a little bit. Uh, tends to make it much harder to desecrate and to cast a lot of the more difficult spells, and gives us a little bit more oomph and push when we're trying to get over in the air with Lightning Sprite. Aurelian Merchant trades in for cards like Xenon Banner, Vara's Choice, Xenon Obelisk, Nash Desert Prince, who is just an absolute 
absolute prince in this market, and Accelerated Impact, which we can use to make all of these high health twist units into a sudden and very devastating attack. Bulbous Humbug gets a little extra power into the deck. We want to have lots of power in this deck, and we want it to be pretty reliable. So Humbug uh, sometimes is as much of a four of in this deck, even though it's not terribly stat efficient. Lightning Sprite allows us to draw and discard cards. It's also the cheapest twist in the deck. Uh, it's very, very easy to play Lightning Sprite. This card's really, really strong in general, but it also plays really, really well with Distilled Venom and Frontier Surveyor. Uh, oftentimes, I have seen this card attack in for 10 to 14. There's some really crazy amounts of damage that you can deal with. With it. It's one of the primary ways to win the game, while also a card that allows you to draw and discard to pick out cards that you specifically need and also address flyers. So lots of good stuff happening with Lightning Sprite. Takas Waystone Harvester is a card that you rarely want to twist, but when you do twist it, you can get a lot of extra power to twist other things, which tends to be very, very handy. You should always take the free twist off of Frontier Surveyor, but in general, try to keep Takas above three unless you have some particular reason to suspect that there isn't a way to kill Takas, because his uh, enemy player can't play spells and his base plus one maximum power make him a very very good body on board really easy to play helps out a lot of the other twist cards and is very very good with frontier surveyor frontier surveyor once we summon gets us a free twist on everything that's street urchin that's larai bulbous humbug lightning sprite to cost all of those get free twists so when we have a decent enough board to set that up it's a pretty strong option and i really really enjoy playing this card quite a bit all right that's everything let's go ahead and go into a couple of games and we'll show it off all right, first off we have Saison, and uh, yeah, Distilled Venom, Hailstorm, Bulbous Humbug, Snowfort. I think we're going to redraw this and see if we can find something a little bit better. We got Crest of Wisdom and Shadow Sigil, and Distilled Venom as well. So plenty of good stuff here, as well as Permafrost and Distilled Venom to keep the board under control. We'll probably play Power Stone on two, and then see if we can follow that into Aurelian Merchant for some extra power. But this looks like a hand that at least is playable, even if it's a little bit awkward in terms of setting up the board. And obviously, once we get Distilled Venom out, we can start messing with some other stuff, which is pretty good things. But the Permafrost is the main thing. That's the kind of removal that we really, really want. Okay, two Distilled Venom. Yeah, I'm a little bit less happy about that. You won't get as much value out of the Distilled Venoms if you're playing a pair of them. And also, we're specifically looking for power, so I'm going to go ahead and play. just throw that out. Okay, Oni Dragonsmith is interesting here. Now this is a little curious. We can play Distilled Venom, but I think I'd rather just play a Power Stone and use the Distilled Venom as like a surprise maneuver later on. Dragonsmith means that our opponent's actually going for dragons, so it could be that we're going to see some sort of like 2 to 3 cost dragon. Uh, there's some good twist dragons, there is Crimson Fire Maw, and there's the new Eclipse Dragon, which is a pretty Who ridiculous setup if we can actually fire. get that going. There's a lot of different ways that that card could be dangerous, so we'd like to kill it as fast as we can. The main thing that I need to do here is get a Xenon Banner. I think I'm just going to trade in possibly Aurelian Merchant for it. Looking at what we've got, we do have Xenon Obelisk as well, so Permafrost is still useful. Takas is necessary to actually get the Distilled Venom to twist. So Merchant might have to be what it is. Or I could trade this Primal Sigil, which I'm pretty much okay with. I don't really need a lot of double Primal in this deck, so... Just getting the influence is probably the most important thing, especially since we're setting up power. I'm a little bit skeptical of that, but it seems like the right thing to do. We'll throw Distilled Venom since we got the power for it right now, and to cost into Twist will kill the Dragon uh, buffer immediately. So provided we aren't seeing a Crimson Fire Maw on this turn, we'll get rid of this card before it buffs any dragons, which would be ideal. Uh, the one problem here is that, of course, I did sort of pre-prep this, so... If there is a four-cost dragon, which seems eh, reasonably likely at this Channel point. Inner peace. Nope, it's a uh, Oni and Dragons deck, so we can just play to cost, immediately here? kill that thing, get ourselves some extra uh, bonus power, and now we're at eight power overall with a 4-4 four, four on board, which is definitely where we want to be standing. Kind of like Permafrost on Jishu here, but I think we should save it for... More dangerous fare. Uh, Xenon Obelisk looks really good here, as does Nash Desert Prince. We have so much power available that we're not really unhappy with anything that's happening. I would say that trading for Nash seems really reasonable, even though Nash can't be played, and trading for Obelisk seems very reasonable as well. Uh, I'm going to go with Obelisk in this situation, because we just have a ton of power, and I think I want to see a 4-6 and a 6-6 go completely ham on this opponent. Waha! Okay. Yeah, tons of damage. Xenonobelisk is super powerful here. Permafrost is going to get all of the necessary tools that we need. And just by sheer virtue of Distilled Venom giving us like extra twists there, we have so much power to play with. 
Power Stone gone. Uh, what was the other card? Xenonobelisk is gone. That was a main deck bore. <laughs> no one can expect the main deck bore. All right, well, uh, so we don't want to twist a Koss again because, again, there are torches. But I will go ahead and twist a Bulbous Humbug here. Let's get a Primal Sigil. Now, if we want to draw another card, that's allowable, but... I'd say that I'm mostly comfy here. My opponent's probably looking for a torch. I think I'm just going to stay put and try to play the value game. Uh, like, if there's a torch here, I don't want to see it. I don't want to lose to cost because to cost is actually providing me a lot of value. He's plus two maximum power right now. Let's try that again. Okay. Flame Brewer is an interesting one because it does trade pretty well with basically everything that we're playing. I would say it's probably a good idea to just play it to cost and block it. But yeah, I'm pretty uncomfortable with that card because it does generate a card of its own, and that spell could be very useful depending on what they pick up. It's a random spell, so it could be absolutely anything. Ends up being Entangling Vines, which I think we can deal with. Could block here. That would lose me like a torch. But I think we're pretty happy. Okay, Street Urchin. Spare some coins. That's the kind of thing I like to see. Let's see if we can steal some real cards. Got that torch that we knew was there. Kyojin Grand Shugo is a great blocker for the 5-3. And also, it's better to have him here than have other options. So let's go ahead and attack. Takas will not be doing anything for a little while, and I can permafrost the 2-2 if I want to since but i'm actually good so we'll probably be okay uh, at this point i feel comfy maybe twisting to cost for a little extra power if we need to it's not strictly necessary but this to cost is not the big deal and i am okay with seeing torches since i'm going to be blocking the 2-2 with the 0-4 so fire sigil there there is a torch we're going to see it on either the 3-2 or the 0-4 so that's something to pay attention to but got that got that there can't be any buffs. Oh, interesting. Stand Together does qualify. It was a random spell off of uh, Flame Brewer, but yep, certainly works. Okay, so one thing that we didn't see here that's really, really important to note, we didn't see a torch, right? There was no fast spell response to that. I have 10 damage here, and all I need to do to get uh, the total amount of damage that we need is twist twice. Treasure for the taking. For the and that's something to note about basically any twist deck, is that you actually have lethal uh, even when you have a very defensive board pretty frequently, and people will kind of miss that. So really, really su fun stuff to do, and that went pretty well, I'd say. All right, the next few will be from our Twitch stream. I hope you guys enjoy them. I certainly did. Uh, first day of Trials of Grudov was a delight, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what's happening here. Here we go. Still Venom, Bulbous Humbug, Lightning Sprite, Takas. Part of the idea here was to play really heavily around Lightning Sprite, like throw a bunch of power into our void and just go crazy with it, but we didn't really get to that, so... I'll take it. The desert gives me strength. Lightning Sprite can kill it in one, so that's not a big deal. Mind over body. That's a bit bigger of a deal. Another distilled venom. Seems good. Toss merchant. Don't love it. You can do this. Ooh, really don't love it. What do we have here? 
Street Urchin's a fun twist. Enjoy the 6-6 while it lasts, I guess. What is this rudeness? I've been double rebuked so far. The desert gives me strength. Okay. I got some good blocks here. It's gonna be stand together, right? Could be something else. But stand together seems likely. Okay, that was interesting. That actually doesn't get you any more damage. It just saves your Master at Arms, which admittedly is a good thing. Takas unshifts in a second. Stormhold Knife just kills that 5-6 or kills the 2-2 for that matter. that. Uh, thank you. Cool. Are we going to play another Takas or are we going to twist again? Twist again. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I could use that card dry engine. Can now spar with everything. That's a little rough. Jump there, urchin here. Kill this. Wait, no, because we can already kill that. All I gotta do is play to cost and twist it. What do we have here? Treasure for the treasure for the taking. Treasure for the treasure for the taking. Okay. That did the trick. Yeah, when we actually get that curse, that's that's a very big deal. No, distilled venom is great. Card is a winner. Uh, this is pretty cool. Like, I mean, if you get a Distilled Venom on your unit, there are... There is a good chance that you might literally just want to annihilate your own unit. It's that good. It's a very, very ugly curse. Spare some coin. You can do some cool things with it. Also, Street Urchin was already ridiculous and nobody picked up on it. Which is always fun. Seed of Wisdom. This is all of the power that I need, so I could grab a cargo here, but I think I'd rather find power. I'm gonna just block with Street Urchin here. I mean, it's Skycrag Yeti, so yes. This deck has been doing the same thing to us every single game for quite a while. <laughs> what do we have here? Alright. We beat out a torch, so that means that we probably have a good chance of killing whatever comes next. We ride. Stilled Venom. Primal. Twist. Twist. Treasure ah, ah, for the Treasure for the taking. Ah. Ah, ah, treasure for the treasure taking. for the taking. 
Ate your stuff, and now I can lightning sprite the rest of my hand away. Nobody's particularly surprised by that. Good time as fat. Nash, Nash. Getting tiny killer effects seems like a really, really good deal. Doesn't, opponent doesn't have any flyers worth having, which is very unfortunate, but everything else feel, feels pretty good here. We hunt as a oh, shit. Didn't know he did that. <laughs> it's not enemy units. Okay. I've made errors in life. Man, Nash, why you gotta hate flyers like that? Okay. Block here, block here, I think. Unless we want to pull power. Probably get away with pulling power here. At least one. Unleash the shadow's power. Pull power. Pull power. Twist. Killer. Power. Okay, we're golden. This attack looks good, but it's not, actually. Not unless you have a trick. Bye. No torch. And if you had a trick, you couldn't play it because of a cost, so... I think we just turned off enough of the Skycrag to get ahead. You. What do we have here? I got plenty of power here. I'm not really looking for anything. Should have held on to that last power for Lightning Sprite, just in case. Dust Grader's interesting. Treasure for the taking. A great find. A great find. Obelisk. Other Steph of stories, why not? <laughs> Uh, can't kill her this 4-4 yet, but I'm feeling pretty good. This deck is great. Yeah, changing off of, like, we just had too many themes. When we narrow it down a little bit, we're actually starting to have some fun with it. This is really interesting. Oh, no, not my face. No, I don't appreciate that. We're going to play a Staff of Stories and then a Praxis or Cannon to gain some life. What you get for going after my face? <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. Twist and Shift were not even ranked viable previously, and now they're actually playable and ranked. And they're such good mechanics. Like, Twist is extremely fun to play, and Shift is, like, really sneaky and interesting. Like, both of those mechanics really needed some support from uh, Dark Frontier being a small set. And, like, that is exactly what this whole set was about. Like, this whole expansion was about. I think it did the job. Like... We just put in four. Keep that. Like, you gotta be able to match Rakana, you gotta be able to match Stone Scar. Skycrag is the tough one. It's better to Lightning Storm Skycrag than, like, Hailstorm it most of the time, but, like, you only run setback against Skycrag metas. And it's not just Skycrag out there. Crest. 
Crest seat. Cargo. Cool. Game's delightful right now. You're a sad bunch. Thanks, I hate it. No, that's too expensive. Can't afford a six cost uh, Xenon Obelisk. It's just not going to happen. Now, the real training begins. Hmm, five cost Humbug's not my favorite thing ever either. Oh, nice. Got a Salir Sanctum off of that. You get to play a power too? Ooh. Fancy. Okay. Lorai or Lightning Sprite? Lightning Sprite. It's a good enough answer, and I can use it to discard some of these crap cards and get some better ones. You're a sad bunch. Learn from the ancients. Thanks, I hate it. Take this! You. Don't want to twist right here. <laughs> as nice as it would be. Fresh kills make the best pelts. Okay, so Lorai twists for like staff of stories that cost seven. So we should be pretty careful with that one. What about Aurelian Merchant? Nash would cost eight. Obelisk would cost six. Zed and Banner would be great. Treasure for the taking. Seems good. Better than what I got, anyways. We can just straight up kill that 4 4 and discard a bunch of cards while we do it. Uh, what's happening here? Relic stuff is happening here. Okay. I can live with that. Cool. Don't need that. Eh, not really into that either. Could attack for five here. I'd be comfy with it. We got a nasty lightning sprite right now. And we should start punching before this deck goes nuts. Let's play a game. Yeah, exactly. Cuss seems fun. Don't think I need that. Ah, a customer. I'm gonna trade to cost for let's say Nash Desert Prince. That does get rid of my best flyer though, so Nash might be the thing we play after our flyers are gone. <laughs> anything cool back with that? I guess. Not anything amazing. A great find. A great find. I think I'll just pick up a 6 cost obelisk and go at your face. Here's an 8 5. Hiya. Come get me. <laughs> cool. No dredger for you. I love a good crown from time to time. Distilled Venom kills Severin, and also puts me in 
Lethal range, most likely? How much damage is that? It's a lot. I can twist for a Storm Halt Knife, which I think I'll do. A great, a great find. And then the rest is just going to be discarding. Toss this. I got choices. Toss that. Toss that. I think this is lethal, honestly. Toss that. Toss that. Oh, didn't mean to toss that. Looks good enough. Here's 14 damage in the air. Got an answer? <laughs> a plus. Trust in the shadow. Beautiful. I'll end my turn. <laughs> Staff hailstorm, maybe? Learn from the ancients. Ooh. Well, Nash for sure, then. Yeah. We hunt as a pack. Let's get our other staff. A great find. Because why wouldn't you? Then we can pull another obelisk. And a couple of other things before we obelisk. Here, piggy, piggy. Okay, that's ruder. Gotta make some decisions about that. I can kill Seraph here. Hang on a sec. A great find. Kill Seraph in one go? Yes. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Okay, let's hailstorm the rats. I mean, no, we should hailstorm the rats. Okay, I'm good now. Okay. I think I get nothing. Find. And then I get nothing. A great find. And I get what? Snowport? A great Snowport's great. Find. I've only got one snowfort though. Power stone. Find. I'll take it. Takas. Seems good. We, we just attack with Lorai at this point. I've got an infinite hourglass I can still pick up. I think I want it. No, actually, I'm pushing for lethal. Let's go. Trade with me. Okay. <laughs> that was really fun. God, Twist is so cool. Alright, that's it for today. Something in the editing for this video got a little bit twisted around, so we are uh, reposting it with a second uh, deck list attached. This is our Twisted Greedthorn list that we were playing with on day one. Uh, we may be doing a full brew on this at some point, or it may just show up in highlights, but it's a delightful amount of fun. Lightning Spray is really, really strong at sort of pushing around uh, lots of interesting options, and this is a deck that can run four Frontier Surveyors very, very comfortably, and also use Seraph to some pretty pretty ridiculous amounts of advantage. We can get some cool stuff happening here. It's a really fun deck to play, and of course we get to use lots and lots of Headhunters with Distilled Venom, which is such a fun card advantage engine. I really, really like this deck. We'll probably talk about it in the future, but I've got a couple other brews that'll probably take priority. So uh, here it is ahead of time, and thank you guys so much for watching.